and evacuated too um, is really a much better option at that point. Um, there are, there are, um, uh, you can make a trade off in, say, warm and cool temperate. A uh, flat plate typically is going to be, is going to win in um, tropics and subtropics. So, what you're going to see is that if you're in tropics, subtropics, it's almost, you know, and there's no chance of freezing, then flat plate is pretty much the way to go. If you're in an extremely cold environment and you really decide you want to do thermal, uh, thermal uh, uh, hot water, then uh, solar, thermal, solar thermal hot water, then evacuated tube is almost certainly the way to go. And in the mid latitudes, you have some choices and options that you need to look at. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, so that kind of just tells you you really have to look at the environment you're installing in to determine what type of collector is going to make more sense to you, for you. Okay. So the next piece part of the choices are whether we're going to use a passive or active. Um, system. Um, passive or thermosiphon systems are going to use convective circulation instead of a pump to circulate the water. Um, and you can see here this diagram, what you have to you do is you're putting the hot water tank physically higher than the collector. And the reason is you want the cooler water from the bottom of the hot water tank to go downhill, be pulled down by this convective current, and then to be heated up in the collector and then pushed back up um, as it expands into the hot water tank. And um, that is a passive or thermosiphon system. Um, these kinds of systems can work very well in tropical climates. Um, what you're seeing here is also what's called direct system, which we're going to get into in a minute, which basically means that we are running the hot water directly through the solar collector. And so this is a very simple system, um, but it does require that you have the capability of physically supporting your hot water tank up high. And what you're going to see is in a number of off-grid situations in the tropics and subtropics, these systems work very, very well. You can put the hot water tank up pretty high. You can put the solar collector down below it. And then if you put the hot water tank up high enough, then you can actually get uh, enough water pressure out of just the, the, the drop off of the hot water tank down to your points of use. For that to be, um, be be reasonable, you're not going to probably get the 40 to 60 psi that you're going to get out of a, a municipal power, uh, municipal system. But if you set it up for the lower pressure, just remember that you can get almost 15 psi out of say 30 to 35 feet uh, of of drop. So I've seen systems like this just put up on top of a building or up on a tower somewhere up the hill a tiny bit um, and then just let gravity feed them down and very very simple. So if you're in the tropics near the equatorial region and you don't have a problem with freezing and you got a lot of sun year-round then this system a passive or thermosiphon system direct with flat plate probably going to work really well for you. It probably produce more hot water than you really need year-round, okay? And they're fairly expensive because it's just not that hard to build. You can kind of do it yourself if you're kind of handy that way, okay? Now, an active or pump system is going to depend upon um, a pump to circulate the water, and that does remove the requirement that the hot water tank be located above the collectors. Um, this allows you to put the, the water tank down in a more insulated space, um, and that is going to be increasingly important in the colder you go. So as you start moving into colder and colder environments, 
you start moving away from where passive systems are easy, they become increasingly difficult until you get cold enough, then passive is just about impossible to make work right and reliably, and you're into an active system where you've got a pump and of course, you have to power that pump, which is typically powered on electrical, so you take your solar PV or whatever and you would power that pump. And that actually circulates the water um, in and out. This particular diagram is, again, for a direct system because we're pulling water directly out of the hot water tank, running it through some collectors, and then returning it back hot. 